What's up guys, in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to load static data from a JSON file. So typically in a game, you're going to have a lot of static data. This can be anything from like item data with item names, descriptions, effects, and properties, all the way to things like player info and just various things overall. And since you're probably going to be dealing with a lot of data management in the future during game development, it's a good idea to have a solid system system down for how to manage it. So typically I like to have all my data in different JSON files. So what I'll be showing you guys how to do is showing you guys how to set up data in Google Sheets and then export that into a JSON file and import it into Godot for use in your game. I like to use Google Sheets because of the cloud storage feature. It is very nice and you're able to edit all your data on multiple machines without pushing a repository or anything like that. So I find Google very helpful for this kind of data management. All right, so once we're in Google Drive, you can just right click anywhere or click the new button. We're just gonna create a new Google Sheets file. And I'm just gonna call this item data. So the first thing we need to do to get everything set up properly is select the first row and we're going to right click view more row actions and freeze up to row one. Next up, I'm just going to select everything and center the alignment just so it's easier to read. And I'm also going to change the color of this top row because I want to. And how the formatting is going to work is you want to set all your item keys in the top frozen row and then all your values will be underneath that. I'm just going to create a quick example here. In the first column in the frozen row, we're going to type a new key called item name. Okay. And then under this, you would list all the items in your game, right? So if this is the name of the items, we could add a few like wooden sword, maybe pickaxe, crafting table. So just some basic items, right? And how the export will work is it will take all these and create different keys in a dictionary in the JSON file for each of these items. And then we can assign properties according to the row they're in. So we can add another column here. Let's say you wanted to add an attack stat to the wooden sword. We could simply do that here by adding a new key called item attack. And then in the wooden sword, we could do something like 10. Pickaxe could have a lower value, like four crafting table. You obviously can't attack with, so we could either just leave a blank or type in a zero, right? Unless you want to attack with a crafting table in your game. So we could we could do something fun, give it like 999 attack. But um, you can see how it's really easy to add different item data to your game. I'm just going to add a couple more examples here just to show you guys really what you can do. So we're going to do maybe item rarity. And I like to keep all the names at the top very specifically formatted because these are going to be the keys that you access the data with. So you want the naming convention to be really consistent. Now in here, we could just do like something, I don't know, the wooden sword could have a rarity of one, crafting table could be zero, pickaxe could be like a two. You know, it's it's really easy to input uh, a lot of data and you can see how helpful Google Sheets is with this process. It just makes the entire item management and just static data management for game development extremely easy with the amount of organization it provides. So once you're satisfied with all your data, we actually have to get an extension. I already have it installed here, but if you don't have it, just go to the add-ons tab, click get add-ons, and then you're going to search for export sheet data. And it's going to be this one right here. So click on that, click install. It'll give you a couple pop-ups. So just go ahead, click through those, get it installed. And then once it's installed, you go to the extensions tab again and go down to the export sheet data menu. And we're going to click on open sidebar, which will pop up this menu on the right hand side. You can see there are going to be a lot of options. For the format, we want to make sure it's in JSON format. We're going to say default, all sheets. So for general, just ignore all these keep them unchecked. Advanced, we don't need to touch any of the options, but it is kind of helpful to just know the power of this program. You can see that we have some commands that we can place in front of names in columns. For example, if we type no X, which stands for no export, in front of our column name, then it will not export that column. So this is really helpful if you wanted to do something like type no X underscore 
dev notes and then you can put any notes you have on the items in this column and it would not export them to the final data file so we're just going to ignore these um, close advanced json if you want you can force string values this is kind of helpful but you have to remember to be wary of what types of values you're working with i have to convert stuff to strings a lot but if i forced strings i'd assume i'd convert a lot of these values here to integers so just be wary of that um, we don't really have to worry much about this you can also see there is another option here that's actually pretty helpful and this is the array separator character so in this case it is a comma but this will basically notify the exporter when to make an array out of a cell so if you wanted to have maybe like a treasure chest item or a drops table you could use an array in a cell to instance which items and rates it could drop so maybe you'd have a treasure chest item doesn't have any attack it's a rarity like five or something and then here we could have the drops in here you would put something like maybe it could drop a pickaxe and it could also drop a crafting table and you would just instance the um, items it could drop or something similar this is obviously a very inefficient way of doing it because all these items are subject to change which is pretty common in development you'd want to change the name of an item and I did want to mention that if you're going to actually create a table like this for all your items and you start having a lot of different items you're working with you make sure that the items have the same ID throughout all of the editing so typically you'd want to add a new column to the left of this and this would be called the item ID and this would be how you access the data. And then I typically like to keep everything also formatted consistently in these cells. So for a wooden sword, we would do like wooden sword. Pickaxe would be pickaxe. Crafting table treasure chest and the only reason you would have a system like this is because you would then be able to instance the item ids instead of the item names in something like this drop table now this is obviously good practice to do because let's say i named this wooden sword to a wood sword which I probably would not do but then I would have to go ahead and change all the times wooden sword appeared and it would be a mess and I'd run into a lot of bugs so if I just instance this wooden sword name instead of the display name then I could change the display name as much as I want and everything would still work properly so I did want to put that in there I kind of forgot about that but just make sure you have all your item IDs that you're using for any instancing and then this would be like the display name and then all the other data of course we're going to delete this column for now and then we're going to go ahead and click visualize quick just to see how the exporter compiled everything and you can see that the exporter neatly compiled everything into a json file now you can export from here if you want but i also wanted to mention that you'll have to access the key sheet one whenever you get anything and we're actually going to close this and re-export because that would get really annoying in development so in format we're going to select current sheet only and then visualize again and you can see it removed the sheet one key and we just have all of our data right off of the root of the file so this looks correct we're going to go ahead and export this we will compile it and then we can go ahead and download this file so i have the file right here i'm going to throw this into my project file in godot and i'm going to make a new folder in here called static data and paste the file right in here as item data.json and that's all we're going to need to do in google so we can go ahead and close out of this and once inside godot we're actually only going to need to set up a single script and it will be a singleton like most of the scripts i create <laughs> on this channel so create a new folder for singletons right click in that folder create a new script we're going to call this singleton static data now we want to make sure we set this up in the project settings so go to auto load just select the static data.gd script click add and make sure it's enabled let's close out of this we can open this file up we're going to delete all the default code and the first thing we're going to write in here is just a very basic variable container for all of our item data so write var item data now we're also going to use the ready function so we can write function underscore ready 
and for now we'll just pass and we're only going to need to create one new function in a script so we're going to write function and this will be called import json file and we're going to require a path and it will be of the type string now inside of this function first off we create a variable for the data file and this will create a new file class and then we can use that new variable dot open and open a file on our path and for the second argument we're going to pass in file dot read and then next up we'll make a new variable for the json data data underscore json equals capital json dot parse and we're going to do data file dot get as text and then we have to remember to close the data file so write data file dot close and last thing we need to do is get our result from this process and return it so that we can store it to this item data variable so write our data output equals data json dot results and then lastly we return our data output and this function is all set up properly we're just going to write a comment so we know what this does we're going to do returns a imported json file now up here at the ready function we're actually going to use the created process to apply all of our imported data to the item data variable so first off we need our file path so we're going to go into our file explorer and find the json file now you'll notice in godot that by default you cannot see the json format in the file explorer but if we right click in the folder where we stored the file and click open in file manager you can see that our item data.json file is present so to access this all we need to do is copy the folder path paste it up here and then we're also going to write the name of our file make sure to get the extension in there too so the entire thing item data.json make sure there aren't any typos and we'll convert this to a string and we'll need to use this in our function here so at the ready function we'll write item data equals import json file and then we'll provide this path and that's all we'll need for this system if we go ahead and run the game oh we got an error so it says non-existent function new in base okay so this is just a typo make sure there aren't two w's there you probably don't have that but um <laughs> all right so now it's all working so you can't exactly see it right but all the data from our file is currently stored as a dictionary in this variable so for an example on how to use this data we're going to create a new node here we'll assume this is just a different entity and we'll create a script for this guy maybe Since Essentially what we could do is write function underscore ready and when this entity is ready it's going to print the attack value on our wooden sword item. So how you would access that is we write print and then we get the singleton which is called static data and then we write dot then we get the item data variable and then inside of this we use the square brackets with a string and we get our wooden sword item id so we're going to copy this to make sure there aren't any typos paste that here we'll get our wooden sword and then from that we'll also get the item attack so more square brackets and get item underscore attack and make sure there aren't any typos in that either. This will access the third column here and it will print that. So let's see if it works. And the game started, this was initiated and you can see it printed the value 10, which is in fact the attack on our wooden sword. So you can access all sorts of different values this way. Um, it's extremely easy to do this, obviously. You just get the item and then whatever data you are trying to access, obviously. And it's as easy as that. So with that though, thanks for watching the video. If you learned anything new, don't forget to hit the like button and consider subscribing. And if you have any questions on this system or have any ways to optimize this system, uh, please let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to check those out. Anyway, that's it for this tutorial and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.